Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Chewy High Box Hero. This is a $120 mini PC that runs both Windows 10 and Android. You can pick which operating system you want to run when you boot it up. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this thing as we work our way through this review here in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now, before I get into the hardware overview, I often like to remind everyone that that these Chinese computers, while inexpensive, are often a buy-at-your-own-risk proposition. You'll probably get some early support from GearBest if something were to go wrong upon delivery, but long-term support is questionable. So you are, again, getting a good deal, but know that if it breaks a year or two from now, uh, you might just have to buy another one because uh, these companies tend not to support these products over the long term. Chewy is, is a fairly reputable manufacturer. They've been around for a while, but I often like to just let everyone know up front so that you know what you're getting into with these things. Now this computer is powered by an Atom X5 Cherry Trail processor from Intel. This is the same chip we've seen on dozens of other mini PCs and tablets here on the channel in the past. As you'll see in a few minutes, it performs about the same that those do. Four gigabytes of RAM, which is good. I actually have a video comparing two gigs of RAM to four gigs of RAM on a Windows mini PC like this. And basically the added RAM gives you the ability to run more things at the same time. So good that they put that in there. 64 gigabytes of storage. 16 of that is on the Android side. The remainder is set aside for Windows. However, when I first got this thing going, it installed the uh, Windows 10 anniversary update, and it took forever, first of all, to install it. But after that, I had very little disk space left. So you will need to go through and clean out uh, all of those updates, basically make them permanent so that you can have some room to install applications and whatnot. Again, the cost on this one is about $120, so not all that expensive. Now take a look at the casing here. It is all made out of plastic, but you're not going to see any venting on it. And as such, it does get very warm and it doesn't perform all that well under load and I'll talk more about that as we get a little further into the review so if you are doing a lot of heavy-duty tasks that might tax this thing uh, this probably is not the best computer for you because it doesn't have any place to uh, exhaust all of its heat and there's certainly no fan built in it does have a bunch of ports though you've got a card reader here on the front you've got two USB 2.0 ports over here along with the power button your power cord goes in here the good news is there's adequate voltage to support all the stuff you might plug into it so you can uh, get a bunch of things plugged in without issue some of these mini PCs come with a very low powered power adapter that makes it hard to run hard drives and that kind of Thing. This one has a little more amperage going through, so I think you'll be okay with those devices here. HDMI output here. It will output 4K, but only at 30 frames per second, but it will uh, drive a 4K display. I tested that a little earlier. You get 100 megabit Ethernet here and a headphone jack here along with a reset button. It is Visa mountable. They have a mounting bracket that comes in the box. Not very elegant, but it slides into this a little portion there and then you can screw it down onto whatever stand you're putting it on. So that is the overall hardware. What I'm going to do now is get it hooked up. We're going to boot it up and we're going to see how it performs both in Windows as well as Android. So stay tuned. Let me get my monitor going and we'll take a look. So I've switched on the machine and you can see here we've got an option here to pick which operating system we wish to run. So you can of course go to Windows or you can go to Android here and it will remember what you selected. So the next time it reboots it goes back to the operating system that it last booted up. There is a way uh, also within both Android and Windows to specify which operating system it should load upon boot. We're going to pick Windows here and let this load up. Now you can see in my hand here I have a remote control. This came inside the box for its $120 price tag. I thought it was just going to be a basic cursor movement device to kind of uh, get yourself around some of the TV apps and whatnot. But there's another button on here that I wasn't sure about what it did. So I pushed the button and to my surprise, I suddenly got mouse control out of this. So check this out. If I hit the button here, you can see now I can move the mouse around here just using the remote control. It must have some kind of gyroscopic sensor built in. Now the way this works is that it finds its center point based on where you push the button. So if I have it pointed at the screen here, it kind of makes sense as to how it uh, gets the mouse pointer to orient itself. But if I had the remote, for example, kind of pointed up, 
and then push the button, it's going to be all out of whack here because I sent, set the center point uh, when it was in the vertical position. So you want to get it centered and then hit the button here to uh, get that mouse going. And then if you uh, hit the center button there, it equals a mouse click. This was pretty cool and unexpected to see that, again, on a pretty cheap computer. So that was kind of a nice little bonus there. So I'm going to pop into uh, Windows here. We're going to take a look first at some web browsing and then look at some other performance things. And then we'll switch over to Android and see what we can do there. So let's kick things off with some web browsing. I've got my YouTube channel running here with a 1080p 60 video, so I can uh, make that a little larger maybe and head into the Stats for Nerds here. Uh, running again at 60 frames per second at 1080p, not seeing any drop frames here according to the Stats for Nerds, so I think we'll have a uh, good video performance on this. I do recommend on these low-end PCs that you run Edge and not Chrome to get the best video performance. There's a bunch of reasons for that. I know there's plugins to resolve the issue on Chrome, but uh, out of the box, Edge is a better browser for these low-end PCs. Uh, so no trouble with YouTube. Let's go take a look at NASA's website here, nasa.gov. It's a pretty involved page here. Now I am connected up via Ethernet right now, so we are going to get the best possible connection. It does support Wi-Fi. In fact, the product specifications say it supports wireless AC on a 5 gigahertz network, so that's a good thing, although the Wi-Fi on mine doesn't seem to be working. I started mine off with the Ethernet connected, and I have no wireless networks available to me. I did hop into the uh, control panel here, and it looks like it's having some issues with the driver. So I'm going to update this driver now and see if it uh, gets our Wi-Fi working here. And uh, we'll, while we're doing that, though, I'll browse the web a little bit so you can see how these pages render here. So not bad performance. It's a, a slower computer just given the nature of its processor. But it seems like if you're doing some basic web browsing, uh, you should get by without issue. And I also ran uh, the browserbench.org speedometer test, and we got a score of 21 on that benchmark test in Google Chrome. And that is exactly where all the other X5Z 8300 and 8350 machines perform. So it really is performing, at least for basic computing tasks, exactly where other devices made with this same processor will perform. And other basic tasks will do OK on here also. We've got Microsoft Word running with a, a very involved newsletter template here. It's not the fastest thing out there, but it is good enough to get some work done with it at 1080p here. And you can see uh, all is working as expected compared to other Atom-based devices. I did go back to our Broadcom adapter here. It's still reporting some issues, so maybe mine just has a bad Wi-Fi chip on board. Uh, so I'll keep playing with this and let you know in the comments section if I made any progress with it. So let's shift gears to something a little more fun now. This is Minecraft, the original version of Minecraft, and I'm getting anywhere from 20 to 30 frames per second, give or take, on here. I did install the Optifine Performance Enhancing plugin to give us a little better performance on it here, but not bad and about in line where I've seen other Cherry Trail devices perform. And you could probably squeak uh, more performance out by turning down the resolution or reducing the uh, graphical detail. But I like to run everything at the same resolution and detail just to get a good apples to apples across the board. So playable, uh, not of course as playable as it would be on a more powerful computer. Or of course, you could install the Windows 10 edition for a performance boost. Now, one game that does run pretty well on this hardware is Shovel Knight. And right now, I'm getting 60 frames per second. But you saw how it just slowed down all of a sudden? Well, that's not because it's getting overtaxed from all the sprites on screen. It's because this machine is thermal throttling. In other words, it gets too hot and it has to slow itself down so that it can uh, not overheat. So right now we are uh, hovering about half the frame rate we were when we just first started playing here. And I was playing this for a little while, so this has been running for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so, and we're already seeing the effects of uh, the computer getting hot from even running this not so strenuous game. So that's why this machine is probably not going to be well suited for uh, any real kind of gaming, especially games that uh, might demand a bit of its processor or uh, the GPU that's built into that processor. And that is going to be an issue. And that's because there just is no venting on this thing whatsoever to let some of that heat out. So the only way it can cool itself off is just not to work as hard. And I did run the 3D Mark stress test on this, and I got a score of 54%. Now, a passing grade, I believe, is 97%. Uh, so it definitely failed spectacularly in that test. And it's actually the lowest score I've seen since I started running this test on all the computers I test here on the channel. So its lack of cooling 
uh, is going to be an issue, especially for uh, low-end games like this and anything higher than that that you're going to try to run. Now, typically, these Atom processors don't do well with anything that came out in the last three or four years or so. Uh, they typically do okay with games that are about 10 years or older. So a lot of the older uh, game consoles that you might want to emulate should be okay on here. I think usually the cutoff is around the Nintendo 64 or thereabouts. Uh, then a lot of older games like Half-Life and some other things run at 720p. But uh, you'll definitely need to do some research first because most of the newer stuff, not even Rocket League, uh, will run on this hardware uh, at any kind of close to a playable frame rate. So just bear that in mind. You are not buying a gaming PC here, and this one is really not well suited for gaming uh, just because it can't keep itself cool enough to maintain a steady frame rate. And on the 3D Mark Cloudgate test, we got a score of 1,700, which is exactly where other Cherry Trail devices have performed. However, I have a feeling if this test ran four or five times in quick succession, we would see a uh, diminishing score score as it got hotter. Again, uh, heat is a big issue with this one. Okay, so I've got Cody opened up right now. We're going to take a look at a Blu-ray file. We're going to look at this jellyfish test file, and I'll put a link to it down below in the video description so you can use it also to test out your hardware. And these devices typically do well with high bitrate 1080p video. They don't do so well with HEVC formatted video, but uh, things like this, which is essentially a replication of a Blu-ray MKV, uh, should play just fine. There was a couple of skip frames when it got started, but it's generally able to keep up with it. Uh, this file runs at, I believe, about 55 megabits per second, so it's the maximum file you'd ever throw at it in that uh, Blu-ray format, and it should do just fine with it. It is able to switch back into 24p mode if you're thinking about a home theater scenario. However, it does not support DTS HD or uh, Dolby True HD, so you're not going to get the lossless surround sound formats, but it did pass through uh, other audio formats on my home theater receiver. But for a home theater device, it really needs to do the lossless formats to pass my tests, and it kind of fails at that. So it will play back the video files just fine. It'll work well with Netflix and other services as well on the Windows side of things, but don't expect it to push a lot of the newer uh, 4K stuff very efficiently. Now let's shift into Android. And uh, one of the reasons why we spent so much time on Windows in this video is that there isn't much to see on the Android side. So instead of going through that thing you saw at the beginning when we first booted up, I can load up this application on the uh, Windows side here to decide what to do. So I'm going to go over here to switch system to Android by clicking OK and it will then reboot now automatically uh, onto the Android system that is built into the box here. Uh, it's not going to be much, but it will show us Android here. So we're going to let this thing boot up and I'll show you what we've got once it does come back. So here is Android. You're not going to get a fancy TV interface like you might with the Mi Box or the Nvidia Shield or something. So you will be navigating a tablet interface on your larger screen. So for home theater purposes, I think it's kind of useless. It really isn't all that intuitive. Uh, everything will work like it does on a tablet, which when you're using a mouse uh, is not always the best scenario here. Look how hard it is to drag down that uh, little thing up there from the top. I'll load up YouTube though so you can get a feel for how the apps will behave. So what you'll get here is exactly the same kind of interface you might get uh, on a tablet or a phone. You can make it full screen, of course, which is good, but again, you'll be struggling a lot to uh, make this an efficient way to watch video on your television set. So that was one uh, gotcha with it. And another gotcha related to video is the fact that you can't install Netflix on it officially. So I've got the Google Play Store up here, and if I type in Netflix, uh, we will not find the Netflix app on here because it is not installable on this box. Now, this is not Netflix right here. This is an app called Flixer that must be some kind of companion thing or something. So there is HBO Go and Hulu I did see on here, YouTube, of course, but uh, the Netflix app will not install on this officially. You can, of course, sideload it, but I do not recommend sideloading because who knows where the app came from. Do it at your own risk, just like when you buy the device here. But really, it doesn't do so well as a, a media box, as you can see. It does okay, though, with gaming. So if you've got uh, some Android games that you like to play here, like Crossy Road, this one actually does run pretty nicely on this, given that uh, the processor is pretty powerful for this kind of thing. So a lot of the casual games will run nicely on here. Some of the emulators might do okay, um, but I think you'll have better luck with emulation running things on the Windows side. And in fact, I think most of what you might run on Android will already be on Windows 10. And Netflix, of course, is on Windows 10. So 
Uh, I really don't see a real value here to having Android on here at all. I also took a look at uh, Kodi on this. It does run somewhat decently, but it doesn't drop the frame rate down to 24p for 24p content. And it also has issues with pass-through audio. It does support AC3 Dolby Digital, but it doesn't support DTS at all. Not even the regular DTS, let alone the DTS HD. But here's the biggest problem with the Android installation here. 5.1, this thing is way behind. And check out its security patch. The last patch it got was March 1st of 2016. This is way, way back here. There are a number of security holes still active on this device, and I would be nervous having this thing running on my network for any length of time, given that it has not received a security update in some time and probably never will. So uh, if you get this thing, if you are uh, knowledgeable enough, just wipe it out and just install Windows on it fresh. It is uh, activated with Windows, so when you do reinstall Windows, it should activate automatically, and you'll get more storage space and you'll have uh, this completely useless Android uh, installation off of it. But it may not be worth the effort given there are better cooled $100 or $120 Cherry Trail computers out there running Windows that uh, might perform a little better under load. So that is the Chewy Highbox Hero. And for $120, bucks, it's not such a bad deal for a Windows PC. I was very pleased with the remote. In fact, very surprised by how well it worked. It's really a nice little bonus add-on here, especially given the mouse functionality that uh, you get with this for the $120 price tag. That's cool to get a peripheral like this built in. I've never seen one of these before on a Windows uh, PC like this, so that was pretty cool. But the cooling is the big issue with this one. It really does get hot and it doesn't have any way to cool itself off other than to slow itself down. And I think that will be a problem for uh, gamers and maybe some home theater people who are really pushing uh, the limits on the computer here. So uh, the, he the heat issue is really going to be something that I think might uh, turn off a lot of enthusiasts. The Android side of this thing is completely useless and in fact scares me a little bit given its lack of security updates. It did update itself when it first came on, but it didn't do anything with the security updates, unfortunately. And uh, it's just a year and a half, it's just inexcusable for a device that is currently on the market. And that is a, a big worry of mine. So I would keep it out of that Android mode. I haven't yet tested alternative operating systems. I will be doing some additional tests with them to see if we have any success booting things up on it. I have not had success with other Cherry trail based devices like this one so I would expect we could probably boot up Ubuntu or something like it but uh, not get audio or networking with it so I'll uh, do that test if I have some success I'll put something up on the extras channel or uh, leave a comment in the comment thread down below so that's going to do it for the high box hero and this is Lon Seidman thanks for watching punch it chewy this channel is brought to you by my patreon supporters including gold level supporters the tangential soup podcast and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.